The first two episodes of The Outer Limits definitely dabbled in horror, but The Architects of Fear takes it to the next level. That is, until it becomes unintentionally hilarious. Let's get to it, shall we? Hit me. The Outer Limits. After an apparent close call with an atom bomb, we open with a bunch of shady men at a dimly lit conference table discussing how to manipulate the nations of the world into a lasting peace that won't involve a nuclear holocaust. They decide that their best bet is to invent an outside threat, something for all of humanity to fear, and rather than coming up with something simple like a biological agent or a false flag terrorist strike, they think of aliens. Specifically, they plan to exploit cutting-edge medical science to transform one of their own into an alien life form from another world, one similar to the Mogwai they happen to have caged in the corner. They all put their names into a fondue pot in order to choose their sacrificial victim, and the honor goes to Alan Layton, who looks like he should be playing tennis with Bill Cosby somewhere. Get out of here, but, but I've come to rescue you. You can't. Rescue me now. How come you always embarrass me when I'm rescuing you? Alan agrees to the procedure without hesitation, but mere moments after he passes the point of no return and begins the irreversible process of becoming a creature from the planet Theta, which is in the Andromeda constellation... Hey, somebody in the writer's room actually figured out that Andromeda isn't a star system. I wonder how they figured that out back then when they didn't have a comment section to tell them everything they got wrong. The audience discovers Alan is a married man, and Alan discovers that his wife, Yvette, is finally pregnant after years of trying. Hey, wait a minute. Should I sue for copyright infringement? He seems rather bored by the drama this causes, but he makes sure to ask her the kinds of questions every man asks when they learn they're about to be a father. Perfectly normal questions like, why couldn't you get pregnant five years ago, or... How would you raise the baby on your own if something happens to me? Or, hey, do you want to go get wills drawn up? Somehow, Yvette figures out something weird is going on with her husband. Clearly, she must be psychic. No, really, she's psychic for some reason. Because, why not? Eventually, Alan reassures his wife by scratching her forehead, and then proceeds to fake his death as the result of a top-secret plane disaster in South America, which is a completely mundane thing that happens all the time. Yvette continues to be a skeptic. I don't believe it. But what can you do? It's not like she can see that he's alive by, I don't know, just turning around for a second. With Yvette out of the picture for now, the episode takes a turn for the gold bloom as Alan's transformation escalates into full-on body horror. He has a bit of a psychotic episode. But after breaking a high school chemistry classroom's worth of glass beakers, he is finally caught and sedated. After an intense surgery, he reveals how fragile his mental state has become. But there's no time to deal with that. He is then immediately taken to pilot the fake but complicated alien spacecraft, which will be shot into space only to descend to a very specific spot in front of the United Nations during a meeting of the General Assembly. Though the launch goes off without a hitch, for some reason the mutated beyond recognition Alan doesn't do well in landing, instead crashing near a trio of hunters, fully armed and ready to shoot at anything that moves funny. And this is where the episode stops being scary. Now look, I know for the time period this wasn't the most ridiculous thing on TV, and I even happen to know that the monster of this episode was censored out of certain broadcasts for being too frightening, but I have a really hard time seeing how anybody would find this thing frightening. I mean... Well, here it is. The hunters shoot the papier-mâché Muppet, and that remotely activates Yvette's psychic powers. The creature escapes into some tall grass and eventually makes it back to the lab, just in time to meet his wife and do an E.T. impression before dying. Now, I'm sure I will eventually watch an episode of The Outer Limits that I don't like, but for 90% of The Architects of Fear, I was eating it up. This episode has everything. 
political intrigue, an alien invasion, body horror, human drama, wonderful technobabble, and a whole subtext about death and legacy. It's even really well directed by Byron Haskin and has a pretty great musical love theme. However, the look of the mutated alien is just... just... just look at those eyes. Words can't do it justice. And that's the Architects of Fear. Now, as always, do all those youtube -y things, check out my Patreon, and all that good stuff. But until next time, this is the Unapologetic Geek, telling you to never be ashamed of what you love. As long as you're not hurting anybody. Mm -hmm.